Got a new honeycomb board for laser. It's right here from Daddy Wheels. No, that's not a porn site. That is a uh, distributor that sells these on Amazon. I have not opened this yet. So we're going to get into this. I'll do a little test cut and then we'll talk a little bit about why you may or may not need a honeycomb board for your laser coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I mentioned at the beginning here, I have a uh, honeycomb board. This is not a real big one. It's a, looks like it's about 400 millimeter square, which is about the work area of the Wurtzker Laser Master 3 here. I'm going to be demonstrating this on. So as I mentioned, this was supplied to me by Day Wheels to test and demonstrate. So we're going to crank this out of the box here, see if we have to put anything together. I have other honeycomb boards. Oh, I see we have a little brush here for cleaning things up if you need to. And you have a piece of sheet metal that will go underneath the honeycomb board so that it does not spoil your spoil board or your layout grid as in the case I have here. So we know that that's going to go underneath the honeycomb board. So I'll just lay that in there for right now. And we have Little bag of goodies here. What do we got? See, we have some magnets in there. That's good to keep your work in place if you have something that's light and magnets really stick. And then we have some little rubber feet, which I'm sure will go on here somewhere. And I just knocked one of the corners off. But those just slip on there. A lot of honeycomb boards are made that way. These just slip on like so. I may be gluing these on. So it does have some graduations on it, and they're, they are metric on three sides. There it is right there. And as I mentioned, the magnets here are, to, are used to hold your work in place. If you have something light that you're cutting, that the, uh, if you're using air assist, it may blow it around. This will keep it in place. And there are six of these little guys in there which I will leave off of there for right now. And I'll get some things organized here. So I can just set this in place here over that piece of stainless steel sheet there. Let's see if I got enough clearance here on everything. It appears that I do. Otherwise I do have elevating blocks. I can put these blocks in on my corners here and elevate this. That looks like we'll be good there. I just find me a scrap here and get a file loaded up and we'll check this thing out. Okay, what I've got here is just, it's, it's just a scrap of the other side I use for a grid test, but we're going to cut out a little cow here. I've got a little bit of fill on it. I've already uh, framed this to make sure I'm in the right place. So we'll give this a start and it'll, of course, it'll do its fill first. Then we'll come back when it starts doing its cutting. So as it starts its cut here, uh, as you can see, the smoke is blowing out below. I have my air assist on. And so what is the advantage of having a honeycomb board? You can lay this directly on a, like a sheet of metal and do your cut, but you will have scorching on the back side. Uh, with the, having a honeycomb board there, eliminates, a, eliminates that scorching and also makes the cut a little bit easier to do. And having air assist above when you're doing cutting like this prevents you from getting scorching on top. The places where uh, having honeycomb boards and air assist really excels is when you have some tight fitting parts like right here where we're cutting around for the tail there's not a whole lot of room between the tail and the uh, body of the cow. Okay reach up here and pop this out. Now you see this was a scrap from 
a project I was doing earlier with some testing. But as you can see here, there's no scorching in the front. And although there is a design in the back from that being a scrap from a project, you'll see there's no scorching around the back. If I would have had this straight down on a, uh, a metal sheet, there would be scorching all the way around the edges. So that's one of the nice things about having a honeycomb board. Give another example here where a honeycomb board comes in handy if you're engraving in a mirror. And this is a mirror and we're going to engrave the letter R on the back side, which is mirrored because we're doing it on a mirror. No, that's so it will come out straight. When you do this, you have to have something underneath it because that will pass through. And for just to give an example, I've got this little scrap of wood underneath there. So I'm going to start this. Let's do a little offset fill here. Doing the letter R. And you'll see that it will mark that piece of wood underneath. When you have a honeycomb board underneath there, it will not leave any mark and it will not put a uh, smoke film on the front of your mirror. As you'll see that what we'll have here. Okay, so as you can see there's a, a film on here from the uh, wood that I had underneath it. Now if I do this without that underneath, I'll need to reset my focus. I'll do the same thing right next to this. Okay, I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing, but now directly on the honeycomb board and I did change my focus. If you're wondering about settings here, and I'm sure I'm going to be asked, I'm doing 3,000 millimeters per minute at 50% power, the 10 watt laser, and I'm engraving on the back side of the mirror. And you definitely want to keep your safety glasses or safety goggles on when you're doing anything with a mirror especially, or glass, because that light refracts all over the place. Okay, so here we are. And there is no residue on here, as there was that I had to wipe off of this. So if you have a large project and it transfers all that smoke film and everything on the glass, it could be a real pain to clean. Okay, so I know somebody's going to ask, so it's the two R's, if you have to do it from the back. No, you don't. But there will be a little bit of a difference. You will need to focus not on the top surface, but on the bottom surface. So you'll need to lower your focus a little bit. I'm just going to guess it here a little. And when you're going to do it this way, you definitely want to have your safety goggles on. Okay, and of course, if you're doing it from the front, you don't need to mirror the image. I didn't flip this back around. It's still mirrored from when I did the other ones. Okay, so as that engraves, the light, laser light, passes through the material, and whatever is underneath there, it's going to scorch. So when you have it sitting on a honeycomb board like this, there's nothing for it to scorch. There won't be any type of residue on the back. It will just come out fine. Okay, so here's our, boy, that's going to be hard to show here without getting all kinds of weird reflections in there, but there's my reversed R. Here's the back side. So it can be done either way. I prefer to do my engraving on the back side because I think it looks a little better on the front. You can kind of see the difference here between the two. Hopefully you can see that. One of the things that's hard to put into a camera is anything that's on a mirror because it picks up reflections, of course. So hopefully that's all showing up good. So there's a demonstration of the Daddy Wheels honeycomb board. Well built. Of course, it works fine, as you can see. We got our cow here, and I showed you a little bit about the advantage of having a honeycomb board when you're doing uh, glass or mirrors. Uh, it's, it's something nice to have your work on and you're not picking up any uh, smoke scorching and that from whatever you would have underneath it. So just another use for it, but pr it's primarily used when you're cutting out wood parts, uh, especially, you know, things like this, or if you're cutting cork or leather. It's nice to have that honeycomb board there to keep you from getting the scorching in the back. Uh, there will be a link in the description and where you can get one of these uh, honeycomb boards. They also have larger ones. Uh, when I was asked which size I wanted, I opted for the smaller one because it is the same as my work area here on this particular laser. And it's nice and handy and I can just slip it out from underneath and I don't have to start taking things apart. Again, if you have a laser where you're going to need to raise your laser up to use a honeycomb board, I have several different types. Uh, there will be a link in the description on the risers for the Ortura Laser Master 3. If you're interested in those, if you have another type of laser, you can send me an email and see if we can fix you up with something. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. 
Roger in the shop. Daddy Wheels Honeycomb Board demonstration. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.